Just got this in. So this is the HTLRC Zeus F722 flight controller. This is the DJI edition flight controller with a, a plug that you can just plug in your air unit and go fly. I've got it on the Armitan Chameleon TI build here. As you can see, I've crammed the air unit nice and tight in there. So we're going to talk about this flight controller and a few other products from HGLRC that go with it. I'm going to give you a, a general build overview. The first thing that's great about it, I kind of already mentioned it. The air unit, you could just plug right into it. Now, you can't see it on this, so let me get the other HGLRC F7 flight controller I have here to show you. Now this is the same thing, just in a smaller form. They actually make it in full size and this size here. This is the mini. You got a cable, you just plug it in and you're good to go. Awesome, you got an onboard nine volt regulator that provides nice clean power to the air unit. Now the ESC is the HDLRC FD60A. Now I actually bought that. That wasn't in the review pack, and it's a it's a 60 amp, 32 bit true 32 bit ESC. Now what that means is that you can run DSHOT 600 in data flight and have an 8K 8K PID loop, which is really awesome and that is what I am running. Now I'm running a four cell build. This is a four cell build with uh, race day quads, badass uh, motors. That's literally the name of them, RDQ Badass. Again, this was a budget build. I wanted to get this up and running on a budget so I used old motors. And since they are a little older motors, they're a little they're a little notchy. They're, they're, they've, they've got some wear and tear. And so it was important that RPM filtering worked on this thing uh, and dynamic notch filtering, all that worked to help kind of filter out some of the noise that's coming off these motors. So I went in to Betaflight and I changed the dynamic notch filter to basically what is low, considered low for Betaflight 4.2 using Joshua Barbell suggestions. I also have this set to average three, I believe, for Betaflight for the type of a build it is for freestyle. Now I've also configured RPM um, dynamic idle on the motors and to do that you're going to spin up your motors on the bench, check the RPM, multiply the average RPM by 0.8 and that gives you your dynamic idle. In my case it's 19. This especially helps to smoothen out your uh, motor idle so you don't fall out of the sky when you're doing moves. You get much better hang time, especially when you're working with some of these older uh, motors like this. You know, I've got plus a new, a new motor here mixed with an old motor there. It, it, it makes for a little bit of a, a tough recipe to tune. And I think I got the tune more or less where I want it. I'm not seeing any crazy wobbling or super shakes. It's just decent. I like this. And more importantly, more importantly, the DJI air unit has been flawless with the onboard 9 volt regulator. I've not experienced any problems. Full throttle up hard, uh, burn it up real good. No freezes. Very important that the air unit has clean, reliable power or you're going to have problems with that. I'm happy to say that this has been performing fantastically with that respect. So really, really happy with that. I, I, I don't have any complaints about this stack. I really don't. Look, I put this stack in a very difficult position. I've got wires running underneath it. I've, I might even have some wires touching the stack. It's a very tight build. It's a very tight build. You don't... You don't ever really want to do this. If I had really known how tight this is going to be, I might not have done this. But hey, I think I think it's a good test to see how well this thing does. And I'm happy. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, you can see I've got the cap there on the front, the buzzer here. This is if you're going to do a, a chameleon build with this. Um, that's what I have done. I've got the dampener there, and then I've got a bolt there, and I've got the uh, the FC on top of that, that was so that I could uh, have enough room that the air unit wire wouldn't be pinched in between because the XT60 is actually coming out here across the side. I know this thing looks th this thing looks kind of like a mess. I hope that, I hope that uh, this is not embarrassing to upload to YouTube, but 
I tried to do this as cleanly as possible with the space that I had. It was a huge, huge challenge. This is what I came up with. And for now, I'm pretty, I'm fine with that. For now, I'm fine with what I've got here. I think this is a good ESC for the price, a really good stack for the price if you can get it. Links to it are down in the description below. Um, as always, have a great day, guys. I'm going to go do some flying, and everyone take care.